Here we are in this wonderful sunshine outside Balsham Church and I've just been reading a little bit about the London Marathon which took place earlier this month and here it says it was a very exciting marathon it says there were 18 world records broken at this year's London Marathon and one of the records was for the fastest marathon run in pyjamas, another for the fastest marathon dressed as a pint of beer, can you believe it? And another for the fastest marathon dressed in a six person costume. But what really impresses me about the London Marathon is not so much the costumes, but it's the perseverance and the dedication of the runners. A lot of these are amateur runners who are running it for a good cause, maybe for a charity. But they're also running it because they want to prove that they can do it. They can overcome the arduous challenge of those 26.2 miles. Now, as you may know, perseverance and dedication to a cause is also something which is highlighted a lot in the Bible. And actually, in the Bible, faith is also compared to running a race. In the letter to the Hebrews, it speaks about right at the beginning of that chapter of let us run with perseverance, the race which is marked out for us. But where does the power come from to see that race through to its end? One of the things which helps us to persevere, to run the race of faith which is set before us, is the encouragement, the prayers, the support of people around us. Maybe a, a grandparent or a parent who's been praying for us all of our life. Maybe it's a friend or somebody, maybe in a study group with us, who really encourages us when we have times when we're really not feeling too sure. Or maybe it's people who are praying for us and encouraging us who we barely know. And yet it's those kind of things, those prayers and that spiritual energy, if you like, which may support us to run our race. Something else which can also help us to persevere in running our race of faith is reading the Bible. And there's a wonderful part of the Bible in the New Testament, Paul's second letter to Timothy. Now, Timothy at the time was a leader of a church in Ephesus, but you get the impression by reading the letter that he was maybe wavering a bit in his, in his sense of um, being confident in his leadership. And Paul in this letter is very much encouraging him to keep going, to persevere. And in this letter, in chapter 3, in verse 16, he refers to the Bible, to the Holy Scriptures, and says this, All Scripture is God-breathed. What an amazing statement. All Scripture is God-breathed. God's Holy Spirit can speak to us through the words of Scripture and speak to other people to build us up in faith and help us to run our race of faith. And I personally also think it's a really great idea to read the Bible with other people as well, to study it with maybe a good study book, but to read it with other people as God's Spirit will speak to them too. And together you may be built up in faith through reading the Scriptures, by pondering on the words of Scripture and by inwardly digesting them. There's also another part of the Bible which really focuses in on persistence and perseverance. And this is a parable which Jesus told to his disciples and by extension tells to us as well about persevering in prayer. And you'll find this in the Gospel of Luke in chapter 18 verses 1 to 8. And it's quite a short pithy parable this time. And it's got two very memorable characters to me. So Jesus talks about the, the unjust judge and the persistent widow, two very different characters because the judge would have been a person um, who was very powerful and in a prominent position, and the widow very powerless and marginalized. Yet the widow approaches the judge and is pleading with him for justice against her enemy. And yet you may, may imagine, because of the difference in power and position, that there might have been an inner voice inside her head saying to her, it's not going to happen. 
you're not worth it. This won't go anywhere. But does she give up? Absolutely not. She keeps going and eventually the judge relents and he says, well, even though I don't fear God and I don't fear people, because the, she's bothering me so much that I'm going to see that she gets justice. And there's a kind of comic turn to this parable and, uh, and Jesus does say afterwards, well, look, if the unjust judge will do this, imagine how your father in heaven, imagine how much how God will respond to his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night. But I think the main point in this parable, although there's so many layers to it in quite a short parable, one of the main points is about persevering in prayer, not giving up. I once knew a friend in Bristol when I was living there called Ray, and Ray would talk to me about persevering in prayer and he said to me this he said ian pray as you can not as you can't and by that he was trying to encourage me to work out what kind of prayer best suited me and and by praying like that even though i could explore the riches of prayer and all sorts of different prayer also be encouraged by the pr kind of prayer i was drawn to now i wonder what prayer you're drawn to to encourage you in your race of faith maybe it's using the Lord's Prayer often daily at regular intervals. Maybe using inherited words of prayer which have been passed down through the centuries to us. Or maybe you like praying off the cuff or praying with your imagination or maybe you like praying in stillness and silence. But whatever works for you, keep praying, keep persisting in faith. Know that the support of so many people around you are there, their prayers, their words. Know that you can be inspired by reading the Holy Scriptures. And also, finally, coming back to the letter to the Hebrews, which I mentioned at the beginning, and it referred to, let us run with perseverance, the race which is marked out for us. But it also goes on to say this, Keeping your eyes fixed upon Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. And so you see, if you can keep your eyes in all of the things that you do, fixed upon Jesus, who endured for us the cross and always offers us his love and his salvation, then that is how you run a straight race.